Hi everyone, welcome to Jabatiki. In this tutorial, we'll discuss how to use dynamic insert and update annotation in Spring Boot. Okay, all right. Basically, these two annotation will help you to improve performance of any insert and update operation. As you know, while performing CRUD operation, JPA or Hibernate will generate the query behind the scene, right? But does anyone validate the Hibernate generated query? Or is Hibernate generating the appropriate query for my operation? If not, don't worry. We will validate that and improve its performance using dynamic insert and update annotation. So without any further delay, let's get started. So to save our time, already I created one small project where you can see one method I define called post mapping. We will take the product object and will save in the DV. Similarly, I define one method called put mapping. We will usually take the product object and will update in the DV. Okay. So if you will check the method call from this controller, I am just calling the service method and in service I am not doing anything. Simply I am calling the DAO layer and I am just persisting the product object. Similarly, if you will check the update method, which is put mapping, if you will go to the service dot update product here, I am just getting the existing object from the DV and then I am populating existing object with the new value, which I will pass as part of request. Then finally, I am persisting it again. So th these are the two operation create product and update product. I have defined in my service repo and controller. Okay. And to print what Hibernate internally generating the query, I have defined in my application.properties file. If you observe it carefully, let me zoom this. I have defined here. If you observe Spring JPA, so SQL, what Hibernate is generating, just show me as part of the console. And also while displaying, just format that SQL in the proper structure. Okay. So these are the two statement you need to define if you want to see what Hibernate or JPA generating the query behind the scene. Okay. Cool. So you can also remove other uh, key and value, which is not required. So almost whatever I added here, I believe everyone aware about it because this is the basic of Spring Data JPA, where you need to define the data source. And these are the Hibernate properties. And if you want your JPA or Hibernate will create table for you. You need to enable this DDL auto either update or create. And this is the dialect who will take the method and convert your method to the query. And this also I can remove and this I define the physical naming strategy so that whatever the entity value entity uh, what I can say the variable name I have with the same name I want to create the column in my table. Okay. So these are the basic um, if you if you aware about the spring data JPA. So these are the common uh, key and value you need to define. Okay. So what we will do now to verify what exact query is being generated by this JPA or Hibernate when I will call this add product and update product. We will first verify that query and then we will validate whether that query is really appropriate as per my operation or whether that query is exactly what I needed or not. We will verify that. Then we will find out the solution to improve the performance of that output. Okay. So for now, what I will do, I will just start my application. Simply, I will go to the main class. I will just run it. So if you observe here, we got the response. The application is started on port 9191. Then can you see here the query statement generated by the JPA? It create the table with the entity class and then it check all the attribute defined in my entity and then it consider them as a column. So simply if you go to the product entity, you can see here, right? Let me zoom this. I have defined ID, which will be auto generated name, price, description and product type. So this particular object I'm going to persist in my DB. Okay. And when I start my application, JPA is creatable for me. So I can verify that. Let me refresh this. Can you see here the product table? Now, if I'll run the SQL query, select 
star from product i don't have any information here right that particular table is empty now so what i will do we'll simply call the add product method to add a product object to the dv so i'll clear this console for now i need to go to the postman then i need to pass these four information as a request body name price description and product type because id will be auto generated okay so simply okay let me check the url the controller url is slash products go to the postman i have the request body ready with me http localhost 9191 slash products and these are the field i need to give okay so what i'll do i'll simply hit this particular endpoint and once i will hit this particular endpoint the request will go to the controller method okay i will show you that the flow i will show you it will go to the add product method then from the add product method it will call the service add product method then from service it will call repository dot save method we are writing the method but behind the scene it will fire the insert statement for you okay so let's go to the console and go to the postman let me hit this endpoint then simply just click on send the record got inserted we are getting the id as one but if you'll check the query generated by this jpa what did it fire insert into product description name price product type id will be auto generated since we are giving these four value it is giving us the result same we can verify in our db as well just fire the query you can see the first record here okay since i am giving all the value to insert the query is correct here there is no mistake from the high one at end now what i will do i will just add another object let's say this will be mobile price will be 299 299 i will give the description as null okay i don't want this field to be insert in my table then next i will specify this product type as electronics okay fine now observe carefully i will send the request again the record got inserted id2 price is this description is null and product type is electronics okay i will verify in the dv first before i check the query generated by hibernate this field is null because i don't want to insert this description field but if you observe the query generated by the hibernate this is the first query where we give all the information right now the second query is generated insert into product this is my table name description name price and product type if you observe we are not giving the description value so it should not insert this particular column okay when i say it will not insert the column it is not inserting the column that is correct but while generating generating the query it is showing the description to insert okay which is not a valid insert query okay just keep this in mind even though you will not change the field or even though you will not add that field still hibernate while creating the insert query it will take all the field from your entity and it will just fire the values okay if i have 100 um, column in my entity or 100 column in my table if i will fire a insert statement with using the two four field still you can see all 100 columns here and the value corresponding value here either it will be null or default value but still hibernate will fire the query with all the column present in your entity which is not a appropriate okay cool so do you know how hibernate is writing this query in case of insert or update i will come to that point while explaining the put mapping but for this insert do you know how hibernate is usually generating this query by displaying all the field in my entity what happened internally when we start our application hibernate generate the sql statement for crowd operation of all the entity defined with annotation at the rate entity so if you go and check in your product if you define 100 entity like product employee department then hibernate will simply scan your entity and it will scan all the field of your entity and it will create one single create statement or insert statement and update statement and then those two statement it will cast in memory to improve the performance of hibernate and jpa 
that is fine you re by reusing this particular query using the jpa this jpa will improve the performance that is correct but if i have the thousand of column or let's assume hundred column in my table if i will update for one column it will display me to update all the column i'll come to that point let's think about this insert statement okay let's say i have hundred column but i am going to insert only these two field description and name rest all field i don't want to touch anything or i i just want to keep them as a default in that case also hibernate will fire insert into product all the 10 columns and their corresponding values okay which is because it initially on application startup it scan my product entity and it scan all the attribute and it create one single insert statement by considering the crowd operation which he cached it in in memory and then when you will keep accessing that particular insert statement or uh, create statement hibernate will reuse the same query which is already cached okay that is the reason this is not a recommended way to use reuse the query by jpa how you can avoid that the approach is simple okay go to your entity class then simply on top of this entity tell to the jpa just use the dynamic insert okay it means you are telling to the jpa don't use your brain i defined your dynamic insert so when i will execute any create operation or insert operation to the db just read what attribute i am giving as part of the request only insert those value not all the value okay this is how you can avoid for insert i mean uh, for add or create scenario okay now let's verify in the update scenario or put mapping okay i'll not change anything i'll rerun in the same time but let me show you the default behavior of put as well okay so simply let me go to the uh, postman i want to update this value okay because we keep the description as a null first of all i will give this value i will hit the put api right i need to give the id i'll remove the id from here then i'll simply change it to the put so first of all we'll try two different scenario i am not changing anything whatever the object exists in my dv i am giving the same object to the update again okay so if you observe description i didn't update it now what i will do i will clear the console we are good with the insert statement okay let me clear the console now let me hit the update now the value got updated again anything we are not giving anything right so there is nothing to update but still if you'll check in your code hibernate will simply fire one select statement to check whether really that product object with that id is exist or not okay now let me clear this again now here i will just update the description so let me add some value let's say mobile right uh, one plus latest or 10 pro i just update only one field description okay now if i'll send the request id2 the value got updated first let me verify in the db can you see here the description got updated and if i'll check the query now see here hibernate update product set description name price and product type if you observe what did, which exact field we did the set description not all the field but still hibernate is doing the update for all the field which i have it might cause the problem in your audit table okay that is why this is also not recommended to directly use the create and update query generated by the hibernate or jpa to avoid the performance issue always you need to use dynamic insert and update annotation to tell to the jpa hey while inserting just insert those field which i am giving to you as part of request or while updating just specify only those column or only update those columns which i am giving as part of request the value which i am not giving which is not changed in my dv don't play with those input for in this scenario name price and product type we are not doing anything with this field because the, the same value is present in the dv i am not going to modify these three field i am only modifying the description but what hibernate is doing 
he is updating all the columns okay in case if you have 100 columns and you want to update for one column let's say for name then all 99 columns hibernate will update okay again to avoid that there is another annotation similar to the dynamic insert you can use at the rate dynamic update okay by defining this dynamic insert annotation you are telling to the jpa please insert those value which i am giving as part of request don't combine all the columns or all the attribute of my entity while generating the insert statement similarly for update dynamic update you are telling to the jpa just use those value which i modified as part of the request then simply update only that specific column or attribute in the table not all the column in my entity okay now we are good we define these two annotation and we know the purpose of using these two annotation let's simply rerun the application okay once we'll rerun then again we'll fire one post and update or uh, create and uh, update the product then we'll verify the query generated by the hibernate or jpa so it started let me zoom this let me clear the console simply i will go to the postman i will add a new entry here go to the post um, i will add something like let's say book price equal to two triple nine let's say description let's say some uh, kitty book knowledge okay anything i am just giving some random value okay and the book price will be triple nine also what we can do let's make this description field as a null okay this field i don't want to insert let's say null then we can fire the insert statement right but before that first let me verify the number of record in our dv we have two record and we clear the console cool so what i will do i will go to the postman now since i am not giving this description value to be insert so i can only i am expecting to see only name price and product type or better let me keep this as a null okay these two field i don't want to be insert as part of my query now simply let me send the request can you see here three book and price is triple nine null if you'll verify in your dv the record inserted with description and product type as a null now if you'll verify your query can you see here that is what i am trying to convince in the product i want to insert only name and price not description and product type so that entity or attribute from my entity is not being captured as part of this dynamic query while inserting the record okay so that is the advantages of using this at the rate dynamic insert similarly we can verify the dynamic update let's say in the same entity i will copy this i will just do the update id of 3 i will just update the price to i cannot update the id right i can remove it i just want to update the price to triple seven okay now let it be i will just run this because only the price field i am going to update so as part of the query i should see or I am expecting to check only the set value should to set value point to the price not for all other field okay so simply I will just run the query can you see here the price got changed and if you will verify in your dv the earlier price is triple nine the price is now triple seven and let's check the query this is the insert statement while update it will check the object from the dv if it found then simply update in this table set only the price value what i am giving for update that is what the advantages of using this dynamic update okay so this is how you can use this dynamic other dynamic insert and dynamic update annotation to restrict your jpa to not combine all the field of your entity while performing insert and update operation in your project okay unnecessary if you have if you have bunch of column or bunch of attribute in your entity unnecessary it will consider all the field of that entity as part of the insert query and update query which might leads problem as part of the auditing as well as the performance of your application
okay even though you found these two annotation looks very simple but in real time this will definitely help you to improve your performance okay so do let me know in a comment section if you guys have any doubts on these two annotation that's all about this particular video guys thanks for watching this video meet you soon with a new concept